first came back um, from both my first deployment and the second deployment was um, that it seemed to be that it was Vietnam veterans um, that really welcomed us home and, and with open arms. You know, I had a couple of them tell me that they, they do this, they're doing this because um, when they came home, they weren't welcomed home in the same way. And they want to make sure that that never happens to another soldier again. And that really touched me. That really, you know, meant something to me that it's not just, it wasn't just like one man that, that did this. It was multiple. We're bringing you the story of one National Guard soldier, not because of what she's achieved during her two tours in Iraq. In the military, I drive, uh, I'm an 88 Mike and I drive tractor trailer and, and convoys and things like that. Or what she does back home in Pennsylvania. I'm a horticulturist, but yeah, I do a lot of weeding, a lot of watering, and I love it, I love it. We're bringing you her story because of the rare, incredible gift she's giving. I wanted to do something really special for at least one of them. You know, if not all of them, at least one of them, I could kind of make a difference for him and really thank him and welcome him home, so. Her way of returning the favor to those Vietnam veterans when raising her right hand somehow wasn't enough. You know, you would you would take a bullet for the man next to you in, in a war zone. Well, what would you do for him when you came home? And that's when a dying veteran three states away received a life-saving message. And I wanted to explain to him in the letter that this is why I'm I'm donating this and this is why he in particular is getting it to thank him and welcome him home and I wanted him to know that. A portion of liver from this 36 year old soldier he will never know. If you get something from somebody, somebody specific and you know who gave it to you and they did a nice thing for you, you're very thankful to that person and you're very, you know, appreciative and you're like, oh, thank you to that person, you know. But if somebody that you don't know did, did something for you and you have no idea who it was, just something nice came your way, you, it kind of makes your perception of the world a little bit different. She's not looking for thanks or accolades from him or anyone. And that's why we've agreed not to share her name or face. I'd rather him just know that somebody is thankful and it could be anybody and somebody is thankful for his service and welcomes him home. An anonymous angel right here on earth. I, I recognize that what I'm doing is kind of a big thing. You know, it's, it's sort of a bigger deal that not everybody could do this sort of thing, but everybody can do something um, to thank any kind of veteran that they know and, and it would be appreciated. I wanted to specify that it was a Vietnam veteran, but I didn't want to do any other kind of specifications other than that. I, I, I didn't want to say, well, I want one that, you know, didn't damage his liver from alcohol or something like that because I, I don't want to judge this person. I don't want to play God and decide who gets it. I want God to play God so that whoever was supposed to get this is going to get it. Giving the gift of life isn't easy. Maybe it's not supposed to be, but when you've been to war twice, I eventually fell back asleep praying I wouldn't be hit and that I'd wake up again in the morning. You've experienced the physical pain. It's over 120 degrees. I'm so dirty. And the emotional stress. I did right. Um, I cried more on the first day I got home than I did the entire time I was away at war. Sometimes you actually end up missing it and feel like you need to do more. That's why you see those proud groups of veterans at military homecomings. And in rare cases, when you meet people like this Pennsylvania Guard soldier. It'll be something that, just like my deployments, that I can look back on and say, I did that. She's donating a massive portion of liver to a random veteran who's in desperate need. Without liver transplantation, there is no way that we can save any patient. Dr. Sukru Emery is the director of transplantation at Yale New Haven Hospital, one of the only places on the East Coast that performs altruistic donations. While I'm cutting the, the you know, donor skin, I always have goose, goosebumps because you are operating on a healthy individual. It's a transplant from a living donor with absolutely no relation to the person getting it. Dr. Emery's definition of a good Samaritan. We call them our heroes and uh, they have a special uh, place in our hearts. So um, 
we try to you know, accommodate whatever their wishes. In this case, she doesn't need or even want to meet the recipient, but she's allowing us to follow along as she enters into a seven hour surgery. Yeah, there are, uh, there are some risks, but, um, and I am, I am really scared. <laughs> but I'm at peace at the same time. If all goes well, her liver will fully regenerate, but she'll be in a lot of pain, a selfless gesture with real life consequences. Do you think what you're doing <clears throat> is crazy? You know, <laughs> a lot of people think I'm crazy. <laughs> and uh, no, I, I, you know, I think I am a little crazy, but not about this. I think that this is something that, um, I think it's an honorable thing to do, and it's almost an obligation. Uh, I'm able to sip water. Um, eating, no, not until this, this thing comes out of my nose. So. We met up with our soldier and her best friend, um, a fellow PA Guard member, in New Haven, Connecticut, three days after Dr. Sukru Emery successfully removed 60% of her liver and transplanted it to the only Vietnam veteran on the hospital's list who matched her blood type. Oh, I think when you get to that point where you realize you are willing to give up your life or risk your life to save a friend or a fellow vet, I mean, that's kind of all of what it's about. The pair, though generations apart, were separated by just one wall during the long, complicated surgery. Do this operation in overlapping fashion. So the donor and recipient pairs, and then one goes a little early, one goes a little later. Well, we went walking around this morning, the whole floor, but I just tried to, you know, not look in any of the rooms or anything. I just really needed to get my exercise, so, um, you know. I'm, I'm happy for him. I really am. She doesn't know if he'll ever write back to the letter she sent him. I want that for this man. I want, you know, if he has sort of a negative perception of, you know, of this country or whatever, I just, you know, maybe this would change him just a little bit. But she did receive a message right before she went under. Um, he had said to tell me Semper Fi, which is a, um, a, um, a Marine term. So he must be a Marine. So that's interesting to know about him. And for a proud soldier who's always giving, that's more than enough. To see the smile on her face, like every time they tell her the recipient's doing well, it's something that's hard to almost choke back the tears because she's just so happy for him. It's always about other people and you know, she's an amazing person. You don't meet many people like her. Now entering into nearly a year-long road to recovery, her only hope is that even one person who sees her story will take a minute to pay it forward. Saying thank you is enough. If people feel the, the need to do more, that's great. But just saying thank you, is that it's a big deal. But we can't forget our older veterans. We can't forget the fellows that, you know, that came before, the men and women that came before. We can't forget them.